great. Okay, looks like that's working. So anyhow, uh, I want to welcome you to this Early Childhood Cares Parent Chat. And um, it's Early Childhood Cares is, a, is an organization that serves kids with early intervention and early childhood special ed. So if you have any questions about your child's social emotional development or, or about their language development or their motor development, you just call us up. Um, you can go to our website, it's earlychildhoodcares.uoregon.edu, and we, you can um, get to the right place or call our office at 541-346-2678. So, okay, so we're here to talk today about um, uh, what it looks like to ki ha get kids ready to go to kindergarten or what kinds of skills and abilities you're gonna work on through our toddler and preschool years that, and then into kindergarten and how that all works. So my name is Judy Newman and I am um, the senior advisor to Early Childhood Cares and was the founder and been around for a while doing this kind of work. And then um, we have Selena, I, you know, I should have practiced your last name, Selena, to pronounce it for me. Zilkowski. Zilkowski. And she's an early intervention, early childhood special educator with Early Childhood Cares. And just recently, she's been a kindergarten teacher. So she's perfect for this topic. And then we have Eileen McNutt, who is a speech and language pathologist with Early Childhood Cares. And um, she also has worked in schools with kids as well. So we have a team that has some information to share and a PowerPoint. But we want to hear um, if you have any questions at any time. So you can just speak up because when we're sharing our screen, it's hard to see everyone. We wouldn't see someone's hand go up. So you could just un unmute yourself and say you have a question or put it in the chat box and we'll call in you. Okay? All righty. So I am going to now share my screen. And we have a PowerPoint to share with you. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay. Yes. Great. All right. So here are the names of the people I just introduced. And what does it mean for my child to be ready for kindergarten? So we're using um, this tool that was put together by the Oregon Department of Education. Oh, now it's, it's uh, they worked on it for a couple of years and now we've had it for about three years. And it's called Oregon's Early Learning and Kindergarten Guidelines. And at the end of the presentation, I will give you a, a link so you, could, you can actually get this complete resource if you're interested um, yourself. But what they, uh, a group of, of people from around the states, there were um, around Oregon, there were in early learning programs. So from Head Start, from early intervention, early childhood special ed, and from childcare, parents of kids. And then we also had kindergarten teachers and first grade teachers that really met together for a couple of years, uh, looking at what kinds of developmental milestones we have for in early learning, what's expected in terms of the standards when you go to school, and how do we align those together so that we can work together to, to make sure we have kids that are learning the kinds of things that will make them more successful in school and that schools will be better at, at serving them. So this guide is really organized by domains or different areas. And it's organized by um, an area called approaches to learning, social emotional development, language and communication, literacy and math. And I'm going to just jump right in. We're going to just jump right into talking about each one of these. I'm going to start with Selena, who's going to share the uh, information about approaches to learning first. Thank you, Judy. So 
as she was mentioning, um, I recently taught kindergarten. So I taught for um, kindergarten, the Springfield School District for the last five years. And then previous to that, uh, I taught preschool for seven years. And so I've got a little bit of experience with this age group. But one of my favorite things is getting families and kids ready um, to enter kindergarten. And I remember being in school and just being so excited that I was going to get to help kids learn to read and do math and all of that fun stuff because in grad school they do a great job of teaching us about the academic standards um, but some of the areas where um, we didn't get as much information uh, are these new domains that were added approaches to learning and social emotional development um, and so I quickly realized that before we could work on those academic skills that we all uh, associate with kindergarten, we really had to develop um, those pre-academic skills and social skills like approaches to learning and that social emotional learning as well. Um, so the, the first domain that I'm going to talk about or area of learning is called approaches to learning. Um, and basically what that is, it has to, it has to do with the skills and the behaviors um, that kids need to learn basically to help them learn. Um, behaviors like initiative, curiosity, creativity. Um, it also talks about areas of um, emotional, behavioral and cognitive self-regulation, things like focusing attention, control of emotions, uh, managing thinking and behavior and feelings. Um, when we support children's development in this area, we're helping them to gain knowledge, to learn new skills, um, and even begin to learn about goals. Uh, as they gain confidence in this area of uh, learning, they'll notice, um, we will notice that they'll become more successful at handling experiences that uh, might otherwise be frustrating for them or difficult or take a lot of time. Um, so the way that children approach learning has a direct impact on these other domains. It's kind of like a, you know, a building block or a starting point. Um, so nurturing and developing um, our kiddos approaches to learning has been shown to positively impact the other learning domains. And it's usually a good predictor of positive school and social experiences. Um, so a little bit about this domain, um, I'll be giving kind of like a brief overview, um, but each of the domains have like several goals and, and areas underneath. And since we have kind of a limited time, we, we won't really go super in depth about each one of them, but I do want to kind of go over what those subdomains subdomains are. Um, so an example of um, some of these subdomains. So specifically for approaches to learning, um, we have emotional and behavioral self-regulation. We have cognitive self-regulation, which has to do with um, executive functioning. Um, we have initiative and curiosity, and we have creativity. So under the... Um, the domain of emotional and behavioral self-regulation. Um, we see things like managing emotions, um, actions, behaviors, rules, and routines with more independence. Uh, in the cognitive self-regulation area, we want to see that children are learning to control their impulses, um, stay focused and on task, and remember and carry out directions and be a flexible learner um, and thinker. Uh, in the area of initiative and curiosity in that domain, we want to see um, children showing initiative, taking interest in being curious about the world and things around them. Um, when we discuss the creativity domain, we're looking to see that children start to be creative in their thinking and their ways of communication. Um, we also want to see that they can use imagination and their play with their peers and the other adults um, that they interact with. Um, so, when we were putting this presentation together, uh, we were kind of discussing what would be like the most helpful thing for, for parents and families, because we know um, that we're busy, we have a busy schedule, and a lot of times we don't have time to sit down and read through, you know, pages and pages of things. So we want kind of the, the concise version. Um, and so we, we talked about putting these parent handouts that um, this wonderful committee made um, you know, with when they were putting this together. And so each of the domains have like a, a really concise parent handout with information and it's easy to read. 
and it actually gives like a brief definition of what that domain is, um, as well as some of the things that you guys can be doing as parents to help support and build your, your children's development in these areas. So um, some of these examples for approaches to learning are probably things that you're already doing as a parent, um, but you just don't realize that, that it even has a name or that it falls under a domain. Um, some activities, uh, for example, would be playing games with rules, uh, reading together, helping your children uh, share and cooperate, talk about feelings and provide consistent routines and schedules. Um, and if you, you know, don't remember anything else about this presentation, just take those little handouts. And like Judy said, she was going to include um, a link to this. And hopefully we can also have just an area with those, um, those specific domains um, on our website. I think we talked about possibly doing that um, as well. And, you know, one of the things we, we wanted to really emphasize is that with all of these domains, we don't want you to approach it as, as a checklist um, where you, you know, look at it and say, okay, you know, my child is, has met that um, check, check, check. Mm -hmm. It's more of um, information to help you understand about the different areas of development and kind of how the children, um, you know, progress in their development in that area. So, um, we will be hopefully getting that information to you, but um, th that slide, it might be a little bit hard to see, but just some of those things that I did mention on there are also on that parent handout. Um, the, the next domain that we wanted to talk about was social emotional development. Um, and this refers to a child's ability to create and maintain uh, meaningful relationships with those around them, um, being able to express, recognize and manage their own emotions and respond to the emotions of those around them. Um, children are constantly learning from birth, uh, but early childhood and preschool ages are a really important time to manage emotions and build strong social skills that are gonna stay with them um, and that can be built upon as well. So like the previous domain, um, this has several subdomains. And so one of them is um, sense of identity and belonging, emotional functioning, um, relationships with a trusted adult and relationships with other children. So the subdomain um, sense of identity and belonging basically refers to um, children being able to recognize themselves as unique um, individuals with their own abilities, characteristics, emotions, and interests. Um, we want to see that children can express confidence in their own skills and have positive feelings about themselves um, and that they have a sense of belonging to, to family and community and to other groups. Um, under the subdomain um, emotional functioning, we want to see that children can express a wide variety of emotions, but also recognize those emotions um, in, in other people as well and themselves. Um, we want to see that they're beginning to express care and concern towards others and that they're able to manage those emotions um, with more independence. Under um, relationships with a trusted adult, so in that subdomain, we want to see that children can engage and maintain positive relationships um, and interactions with trusted adults, um, whether that's family members or teachers or you know caregivers. Um, we want to also see that they can engage in those pro-social and cooperative behaviors with trusted adults, um, with relationships with other children. Um, this is kind of one of those areas where um, I think we focus on a lot because that is where our kids are going to be spending the majority of their day as they go into kindergarten. So it's a really important um, subdomain. So that they're able to engage in, and maintain positive interactions and relationships with other children is super, super important. Um, basically, that, that sets up um, their success and, and their feeling about school. Um, being able to have those, those positive peer interactions and friendships, um, engaging in cooperative play with other children, and then using um, basic problem solving skills to resolve conflicts with other children. And, you know, one thing to, um, you know, to remember as I was kind of reading through this, it's always great to just 
be kind of have a refresher on some of these things. Um, sometimes we, you know, we forget that kids are not born with some of these skills and abilities. And just like we would teach them, um, you know, if they were having difficulty with, with reading or with writing or with math, we should be looking at some of these areas um, the same way and, and really explicitly teaching um, some of these things. And um, as I was teaching kindergarten, there was a definitely um, more of a push to, especially from the teachers, um, to practice um, and give kids the opportunity to learn and develop these skills, especially with social emotional development and approaches to learning, because um, we felt like things were so just focused academically, which yes, that's ultimately our goal, but without these pieces in place, um, our kiddos are gonna have a, a lot more difficulty. And so I was really happy to see the last few years that shift towards social emotional learning and really explicitly teaching those rules, routines and expectations and having really clear expectations um, because that is also part of that social emotional development and approaches to learning. Um, and so you might see that as your children enter kindergarten that there's a lot of talk about social emotional um, learning, about um, you know curriculum that reinforces that um, and just about approaches to learning and um, you know, even for the first month and a half or two months, um, you might be thinking like, where's, where's, the, where's the learning happening? But it is happening. It might not look like you think it's going to look, but it is definitely happening. So I'm, I'm really glad to see that these domains are, are included. And I hope that um, your, the schools that your kiddos are gonna be at really um, can take this also and, and really carry it on. So, with the um, social emotional uh, development domain, some of the, the things that you guys are probably already doing or can do to support um, your kids learning in this area are talking about feelings, uh, discussing problem solving, encouraging friendships and modeling how to solve problems. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of others in, in this document, um, this you know really super rich document that Judy had mentioned. Um, there's actually a lot more in-depth ideas. And like we said, we don't have time to go over all of them, but I highly recommend that if you have even just one domain or area that you want to learn a little bit more about, that you, that you do um, you know, follow that link and just read a little bit about it because some of these things are, are everyday things. They're not um, really difficult, but it just kind of helps put it in perspective and it helps kind of name what that learning is that your kiddo is, is kind of going through right now. So, um, so those, that is the part of, of the presentation that I was gonna do with the social emotional development um, and the approaches to learning domain. And I think that um, Eileen is going to be talking about language and communication and literacy. Thanks, Selena. Yeah. Uh, well, just as Selena was saying that those earlier domains are very foundational to um, academic learning, language and communication is another piece of that foundation that um, we know needs to be strong before kids will have um, the foundation to build on for their academics. Um, one thing we want to make sure to acknowledge is that when we're talking about these language and communication skills, we, we want to honor that some children might be doing these skills verbally, some children might be doing these sounds, excuse me, these skills with uh, augmentative communication, some sort of talking machine, they might be doing it with pictures, they might be doing it with sign, they may be doing it in their home language, you know, um, we, we understand that there's a, you know, there's a wide range of skill abilities and it all can encompass um, skills for language and communication. So the areas that are broken up in the language and communication domain are attending and understanding, communicating and speaking, and vocabulary. So um, you can just go to the next slide there. 
So the attending and understanding is just that a child's ability to attend to communication and language from others, and then to be able to understand and respond to con increasingly complex communication from others. So in this first one, it kind of speaks to, um, you know, a child needs to be able to attend to a conversation and, you know, sort of know how to initiate a conversation, how to end a conversation, kind of hang in the conversation, and then be able to do that as the language gets more uh, complex. So being able to answer a variety of WH kind of questions like who, what, when, where, those kind of things, be able um, to explain. Um, I'm going to back up. They'll be able <laughs> to answer those kind of questions and uh, understand more complex thinking like if then so like uh, they'll hear things like this in kindergarten a lot like if you're wearing a red shirt you're ready to line up if you're wearing blue shoes it's your turn to line up you know what I mean understanding just those more complex uh, language forms there are a lot of instructions in kindergarten <laughs> And, you know, the kindergarten teacher is giving those instructions to a big group. So um, uh, as when we talk about what things you can practice at home, those are the kinds of things we can be thinking about, just being able to process that, that complex language. The second area is communicating and speaking. So the child varies the amount of information, you know, depending on the circumstances. The child understands, follows, and uses appropriate social and conversational rules. Child expresses self in increasingly long and detailed, sophisticated ways. So, you know, the range for this is, is um, wide and all acceptable, and each child is where they are. But the idea is we're just wanting them to keep progressing and be using more and more complex language and understanding more and more complex language. So the next slide, I think, talks about vocabulary. So um, the guideline states that a child entering kindergarten, it could be learning like two, three new words a day. And that, that feels like a lot. But children really, um, at this age, their brains are just so ready to take in new information. So lots and lots of opportunity to hear a variety of vocabulary and hear it repeatedly will help them learn those new words. And then they're going to start learning how those words relate to one another, being able to sort um, like categories like uh, animals, furniture, uh, clothing, and then also being able to understand functions of things like um, what do we do with the stove? What do we do with a toothbrush? Why do we need an umbrella? So just sort of the relationship of those words. Okay. And I think this next one is talking about the little things that you can do at home. And uh, I thought I'd like to kind of expand on a couple of these. So, um, one of the, the suggestions is sharing conversations. And I think that seems pretty obvious, but what happens a lot in busy households, my own included, is that sometimes children only end up hearing language when they're being given a direction or being corrected. And so pretty soon they're gonna start like tuning out your language if that's the only time they're hearing it. So sometimes we have to make an effort to have just some really you know, casual conversations. And some families make a ritual of doing this like at meal times, kind of talk about your day, things that happened, feelings that occurred, or maybe um, at bedtime, you kind of maybe could recount the day and just have a, have a little chat with no expectation of, of where that is gonna lead you. Uh, the other things it talks about are asking questions. Uh, and sometimes um, I feel like as parents, we get thrown in this 
role of like quizzers instead of teachers like we're we're always asking questions but sometimes the children need the information before we can ask them about the information so um uh, a strategy you might want to try like you know say you're you're driving to grandma's house you could say oh we're driving to grandma's house who are we going to see grandma <laughs> so then they they kind of learn that give and take of answers and questions so you because you're modeling both of them for because they they might not really know the answer so you might need to give the answer first and then ask the question um i really like this one that they noted about encouraging children to communicate with each other so uh, I know we've had limited opportunity for that during all these um, closures. So um, when children get back together, um, they might need a little extra support with engaging with one another. So on a day when you are able to go to the park and everybody feels safe being at the park, you know, if a child is feeling reluctant about initiating with, you know, a, a new friend at the park, it's helpful for the parent to go over and, and kind of help with that. And, and you can either give your child the words to say to do that, that you could say, go say, you know, my name's Eileen, you know, or you could go over and just model, oh, you know, we're playing in the sand. Do you want to play in the sand with us? You know, just kind of help uh, bridge that because I, um, I anticipate that that's going to be, be trickier for kids going forward. Um, it talks about playing word games. So I think, you know, we're all familiar with I spy, you know, if you I spy something in the room and you can even expand that to things that you don't see immediately in the room. So, you know, you just be driving the car, taking a ride on the bus and say, wow, I'm thinking about an animal and that animal's green and it lives in a pond and it likes to jump. What am I thinking about? A frog, yeah, a frog. You know, so you can just in some of that downtime kind of um, notice what's going on and, and play word games with things that you're seeing in the environment or maybe even things that you're just guessing about. I could talk for hours and hours about how to uh, expand language and communication, but just talking, 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 talking. I am going to throw in one thing about screen time here. I know that uh, during this closure, we've all had way more screen time than we ever thought possible. And uh, some, some, I understand that it's impossible not to have some screen time with your child, but some ways to make it um, a little more valuable is if you're watching things together, you can pause it and kind of talk about what's happened or might uh, guess what's going to happen. You know, like you're watching Paw Patrol and you pause it and you say, oh, looks like the Paw Patrol guys need to help somebody. What's, what's Chase going to do, you know, and get them to kind of talk about it and then start it again and resume. Oh, did we ride? Did he do what you thought? Oh, no, he did a different thing, you know, just to watch it in a little more engaging way and throw in a little language. So, all right, so the next domain is literacy. So this kind of gets to what Selena was talking about that we most commonly think about kindergarten is sort of the reading and writing and math. So literacy is broken up into uh, phonological awareness, print and alphabet knowledge, comprehension and text structure, and writing. So those, those all sound very daunting, <laughs> but, but we can break them down. So in the next slide, so phonological awareness is just talking about being able to hear and put together the individual sounds in a word or syllables. Just that awareness that like a word is made up of sounds. So, um, you know, things like rhyming or clapping out syllables, you could, you know, you can say like caterpillar. Um, rhyming games are fun. Again, that's a good, uh, Thing to play or practice with when you're riding in the car or the bus or having to wait in line at the grocery store. You know, you could 
could say some rhyming words. And if you're, ch again, if your child doesn't know, if you say what rhymes with dog and they don't know, that's okay. You can just tell them some words that rhyme with dog. Let's see, let's see, log, bog, cog. Oh yeah, those words all rhyme. Shoe, does shoe rhyme? No, you know, I mean, you can just play around with it. You know, it doesn't have to be in any sort of formal flashcardy kind of activity. Uh, the next one is print and alphabet knowledge. The child demonstrates understanding of how print is used and the rules that govern how print works. So uh, in that circumstance, they're just talking about that print is used in many ways. You know, we see print in a book, we see print on a computer screen, we see print on our phones. We use writing like to jot a list down. Um, you might still get a letter in the mail. You know, I mean, print comes in a, a variety of forms. And so just to be kind of pointing that out in the environment when you're seeing letters and print and, and, and to understand that it, it's, it's not just a book because we really use print in many ways. And um, the second one says that the child's identifying letters of the alphabet and producing correct sounds associated with the letters. So going into kindergarten, um, it's common for kids to be able to identify maybe about half of the uppercase or lowercase letters of the alphabet and start saying some of those sounds associated with them. And again, these, um, these are the kind of things that you can do without necessarily doing like flashcard activities, but just having um, a lot of opportunity in the environment. And we'll, we'll talk more about that on the next slide, I think. So uh, comprehension of text and structure. Child demonstrates an understanding of a narrative structure through storytelling and retelling. So this is just the idea that the child can tell you sort of the big idea of the book. Um, often when I'm reading books with children, I, I just use the cover art and say it's, you know, we're reading the book about hung Hungry Caterpillar. I'll just say, is this a book about trucks or bugs? You know, just to kind of get them thinking, well, what, what's this book going to be about? What's the big idea of the book? And then um, eventually you want them to be able to sort of sequence first, next, then last that happened in the book and uh, to be able to answer questions about the book. Well, who went to the store and bought cupcakes? Or, you know, talking about the hungry caterpillar, you know, what happened after you ate all that food? How does tummy feel? You know I mean? Just ask, asking and answering questions about the book. And then writing, um, they're suggesting that children uh, coming into kindergarten would be approximating that adult three finger grip, starting to make more sophisticated lines be, other than just scribbling. We're gonna move from like scribbling to more sophisticated lines. And children really need to understand what we call representational drawing before we maybe launch into letters. They kind of need to understand the idea that, you know, a square with a triangle on top is a symbol. It's a symbol of a house or that you know, a circle with squiggly lines is a sun, you know, because, because that's the uh, foundational skill to understand that these letters that they're gonna learn are symbolic of something. So you know, drawing people, faces, you know, just that kind of thing um, is very valuable even before letters and shapes. So things you can do at home are endless. <laughs> um, so reading books and we, we have a slide we'll show you soon about uh, some different resources the, in the community where you can get books um, but you know, the playing the letter games like we talked about you know the rhyming words they, they also have a skill called uh, that they'll learn in kindergarten that's talking about blending letters to, in words. So you could say, all right, let's jump into bed. Bed, hmm, I hear three sounds. B, E, D, bed, let's go to bed. So just simple stuff like that. Again, you don't have to like sit them down and, and drill and practice. You can just 
embed things in your routine and what you're what you're usually doing. Just having a lot of uh, writing materials available, and you know that can be traditional pen or paper, but it can be markers, chalk, paint, watercolors. Um, in on these warm days. Children love just like taking a paintbrush and white and writing with water on the sidewalk. You know, they don't even need chalk or paint or anything. I mean, there's just lots of ways to incorporate um, writing and letters in their everyday activities. Um, yeah. And do you want to show the the, the library? So, yeah. It's so slides. So yeah. Yeah. So here I have a, a couple of online resources for you. When this, we had the first school closures and I was searching for things online, I had no idea <laughs> there was this much available. If you just Google preschool read-alouds on YouTube, hundreds, if not thousands of books will come up. And some of them are people reading the books Lots of libraries have story times and, and they're on YouTube with, with librarians reading the books. And some of them are like these really cute little animated versions of the books. It's amazing to me what a resource that is. So again, you know, if you're watching it online, you know, that's the kind of thing where you could pause and talk about the book and then continue the book. Um, there's a there's a website that's called Vooks, and you can get a 30 day free trial, and it has great children's literature options on there that that you can check out. And then I'm just loving taking walks in the neighborhoods and seeing all these little book boxes that you can bring a book and then return the book or put a different book in. And there's actually a website that tracks uh, where you can find those in your neighborhood. So you just put in your zip code and it shows you where those are. And then um, Dear Dolly Parton has her program of Imagination Library where you can sign up your child to receive a free book in the mail every month. And um, you can access it at that website. And then as I was just looking through the community, I realized that almost every uh, community in Lane County has some sort of library. And, you know, because of um, the pandemic restrictions, some, you know, there's varied accessibility, but um, certainly worth a phone call and just to figure out, you know, how you could access books for your kids. So, um, yeah, I, I, and, all the things that we've talked about so far with the social emotional skills, the language, the literacy, it all can be addressed with a book. Because when like you're reading the book, you can talk about feelings and you can talk about problem solving and you can talk about new words and you know, I mean, a, a, a book can help in so many ways. So any way you can get your hands on more books, please do. So now I think I hand it over to Judy to talk about math. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be talking about math. Um, gonna be sure I get me up here. Now, I don't know how to get my screen to show up. I thought I had done speaker view, but that's okay. You're, you're visible. What? You are visible. We see you and your screen. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you, Crystal. Um, so when I, it's just, it's sort of interesting that I'm the one talking about math because I have never been great at math, but, um, and I also thought this is really an interesting thing to be including, but there really are so many skills that we do with preschool age kids and even younger that really build the foundation for math. So I'm gonna show you this list and it, 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 these are things, and we, then we're gonna make it a little more relevant to young kids because counting and cardinality, which is putting things in order, you know, from littlest to biggest, um, seems that's very logical for young kids, but operations and algebraic thinking, number and operations in base 10, measurement and data, and geometry and spatial sense. So hopefully I'm going to show you in the next few couple slides how that really looks for younger kids. 
So um, I think the first one, again, as I said, counting and cardinality are, are things that we think about all the time. Kids can, you know, count just rote counting one to, yeah, let's count to 10 or recognizing numbers and knowing uh, what the names of the numbers are and what goes, you know, the sequence of numbers. Um, but also recognizing the numbers of, of, of objects, you know, um, in a set. So, you know, you can start with small numbers like two and three and uh, getting kids to count in there. Uh, understanding the relationship be num between numbers and, and quantities, meaning, you know, which one has more? Which one has more M&Ms or which one has more balloons or balls and which one has less? Those are concepts that really start building foundations for kids to realize quantities and relationships between things. Comparing numbers, um, as I said, which is larger, which is smaller, which comes first, you know? And who's older? I'm four years old and he's six years old. Which one of us is older? Uh, associating a quantity with a written number and begins to write, beginning to write numbers. Again, making sure that, um, that kids, those numbers aren't so abstract and they have meaning and they re really relate to things. Um, <clears throat> operations and algebraic thinking. Um, really understanding adding, adding to and taking away from. It's not really addition and subtraction as we think about it, but you know, there's a lot of things that you can talk about around snack time or other games that you're playing. Like if I add, you know, if I give so and so more uh, carrots, you know, I'm adding to the pile as as opposed to taking away. And if you're deliberate by, uh, about some of doing these things that you do every day, the kids start seeing the relationship between adding and subtracting and more and less. And also simple patterns start really building up towards getting an idea of algebra. And I know there's a lot of kids games. Uh, you can work with beads with kids or blocks and start making different patterns. You can either copy with kids, like, um, you know, I have two little blocks and three big beads or, you know, making things, you could do it with things outside with sticks or um, acorns and leaves and, you know, creating patterns. I know this year when I was camping with my grandkids, uh, we made, uh, nature mandalas, but really it was about creating patterns. So we'd maybe put two sticks and three stones and two leaves and two, three sticks, you know, and repeating that pattern to make pretty designs. So there's really a lot of things that you can do and, and kids can really be engaged with patterns, but you really are building those, those foundational skills of understanding about math and the relationship of, of, of things to each other. <clears throat> numbers and number and operations in base 10, children work with numbers. Um, and I, I, you know, I think for preschool, this probably isn't quite as relevant, although I've seen some materials that will take different things that add up to 10 and then have a lot longer thing. If you, a longer, to like Montessori uh, materials show this and you can sort of see how many smaller parts it takes to form a bigger part. And there are some blocks and thing, games that you can use that really can demonstrate that. So if I take 10 little blocks and line them up, they make, make a block that's as big as this one bigger block. And the bigger block is made up of these 10 littler blocks in terms of size. Uh, measurement and data. Um, <clears throat> this really, you know, children can look at objects by their very att various attributes and using standard and non-standard measurement and using differences in attributes to make comparisons. So, you know, a really common thing at home, I think, would be um, a lot of people have maybe a wall that you actually measure your, your child against. And if you have a brother or sister or a parent and sort of seeing, you know, you can use inches or 
showing the comparison, but uh, measuring charts are a really good example. Um, measuring the length of your foot, um, how far you can take a big step. You know, there's so many things you can do that, re that show distance that I think kids are sort of fascinated by that. And geometry and spatial sense, so child identifies and describes and compares and, compo and composes shapes. And um, again, that it starts at the very beginning, just knowing what the ba basic shapes are, how you draw them, um, what makes one shape different from another shape. You know, there's angles on squares, and their circles don't don't have any angles, etc. And uh, spatial relationships, and again, that starts very very early with um, understanding where things are in space, whether they're on or under or behind and getting a sense of three dimensions that way. And really um, those are basic concepts, but they really also start building the foundation for kids being able to do more advanced skills with math. So um, this is the parent handout that comes with that. Um, and I think, again, when you look at these, these are probably things that you're, many of you are doing with kids, uh, encouraging counting, playing board games that require counting spaces. Um, I play these kinds of games with young kids, whether it's really beginning ones like Candyland or uh, where you, kids actually have to move something um, if it's five spaces, each time you move it, you count one space. And that is a very important skill for kids to get and it takes a lot of practice and games are a really good way, board games are a really good way to teach that. Um, reading stories with numbers, singing number songs, um, pointing out numbers. Again, these are very similar to some of the things we do with letters and, and literacy, but the same thing is, is, is true of numbers. And the one pretty amazing thing about numbers is when you travel or go across many different cultures, numbers are pretty universal. So recognizing a one here in different cultures, a one looks the same and a two. Cooking activities as kids get a little older and measuring um, things out uh, is, or, or counting out how many eggs you need or um, uh, how many um, squares of butter you get to put in your baking. You, there's, there's many things you can do. Um, encouraging children to compare sizes and identity of shapes and natural objects. So, you know, which, which chair is bigger, which one is smaller. There's just endless possibilities of what you can do with these, these fun sort of math activities. And the, the really neat thing to know is all these things that you just sort of do naturally or maybe uh, introduce for your, kid, for your kids are ways, just as we do them more intentionally, we can start growing and making them more um, challenging for kids as we move along. But they're really fun, fun activities and you're helping your child really get some of these basic skills. So I'm going to just talk a little bit more with the time we have left and orient you to this document and tell you where to get it. And I talked about it when we first began, but it's the Oregon's Early Learning and Kindergarten Guidelines. And the idea of this document was, was looking at if kids need a high quality pre-K, pre-kindergarten experiences. So this document starts at age three for kids, which is traditionally when you think of pre-K pre or preschool. Just incidentally, they're working on a document that goes birth to three, sort of tagging into here, but this one starts at pre-K, age three. And then it talks about high quality full day kindergarten. So we're talking about kids also continuing those, that wonderful foundation that you start building in pre-K. They go into kindergarten, continue that learning, and then it continues through grades one through three. And a lot of times in education, pre-K and early education, we think about the linking between these activities because these are the years you really, really are building and forming those really important foundation, those building blocks to learning going forward. In school, we talk about 
you know, reading proficiency proficiently by the end of third grade, because the curriculum starts changing. And then we start using reading to learn. So we're learning to read, and then we're reading to learn. And all of these building blocks build on each other. So in, when you're looking at the document, it's, it looks overwhelming, but it's pretty easy to use because the domains that we highlighted today, like math or literacy or social emotional are all color coded. So they're pages that associate with a color code and a domain. In each one, one of them, it talks about how adults, whether you're a parent or a preschool teacher or a kindergarten teacher can work with children and support their development. It highlights some things if, you're, if your student is a dual language learner, either uh, maybe English isn't your first language at home and the child is learning English or they're learning both languages simultaneously. There's some different things you can do and kids might learn a little bit differently if they're, if they're in dual language situations. And then also pro providing extra supports for kids with special needs, how you might adapt some of the, the activities or the learning, the learning sequence. And they're, they're, they're organized, which I'll show you in, in a second, in a developmental progression. They give you age level references, but we really try to downplay the age level references because we really want you to think about this as building and you don't want to skip over any of the building blocks along the way. And then we did show you today the one parent page guides. So if you don't leave with anything else, you know, you have the five different domains, you can have five single page handouts with really easy to look at ideas and references. So again, here are the domains and the colors. So throughout the manual or the, the handbook, they're in these colors. And this I know is really overwhelming. I don't expect you to read this, but I'm just, so this is in the emotional and behavior and self-regulation. I just wanna point out that it every single one of the skills, so Selena talked about child manages emotions with increasing independence. It shows by age three, what you might be looking at. Age four and five, this is still pre-K here. So if you're thinking specifically about what most kids have ready for kindergarten, you want to, you want to be looking, you know, be building on these skills. And then in kindergarten, these are the skills that they're working on. You enter, and then by the end exiting of kindergarten, you want to be having learned all these. So the, by, the, by age three, by age four, five, we often tell people cover up the ages and just look at the developmental progression, see where your child is, see what you need to focus on. So for every single one of those goals, there is one of these progressions highlighted. And so I just gave an example of the emotional functions in green, tending and understanding. We got literacy. So this is how you access it. You could jot this down if you want, OregonDepartmentOfEd.gov. And um, you can look up the, uh, the kindergarten, the early learning and kindergarten guidelines and you can get right to it. And this will be posted on our website and in Facebook. And I think I could probably cut and paste this and put this in the chat box when I close this off as well. Why don't I try that? So you have it more at hand. I just clicked on it. Let me escape. There we go. Do this. Put it in the chat box. I'm going to stop sharing. If I can get there. Okay, I'm supposed to stop now. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put this in the chat. Oh, there. All right, I did it. So I see there is, there was one question in the chat. I thought the imagination library stops sending books when a child hits five. 
I believe that's correct. Yes. So does anyone else have any other questions? We'd love to you, just unmute yourself and speak up. We have people here that would be happy to do our best to answer them. Hi, Judy. Uh, this is Crystal. Um, this Hi. might be too specific for this particular call, but so my son's been in with EC Cares for the last year or so. And so he's going to be going into kindergarten with an IEP. And I was curious if you could just give any more information about what that process might look like. I would be glad to. Um, and there's also some other resources that really are specific. Did you receive a, um, a kindergarten handbook by email or a PDF uh, that shows the step that are given the steps, Crystal? I don't think so, but I've been contacted by the, the transition person that's the EC Cares, like kindergarten transition person. And I know like she's observed it in class and stuff. So I, I know we're in the process. I'm just Good. not sure about the whole process. What school district? Uh, 4J. 4J. Going to okay. Edgewood. Yeah. Oh, great. That's my neighborhood. Oh, good. Okay. Grandkids there. Um, <clears throat> so the typical, so on your, your IFSP, there should at least be some steps to transition. But yes, the first step usually is that um, the kindergarten transition team from 4J will contact you. Our folks, they have access to your IFSP and information about where you, your student is. And, and then there should be a meeting with you then to talk about eligibility and developing what, your, what kind of supports or goals you want your student to do in school. So I think this, what month are we in, April? Mm -hmm. They're probably just doing visits with kids and you should get contacted for a meeting but um, if things aren't, I, I would reach out specifically to your service coordinator. Do you know who that is for early childhood cares? Do you know? Are you pretty? Uh, cool? I think so. Katie something. Katie Great. Mason. Oh, she's 4J. So K Katie Mason oh. would be a good contact. But also whoever you're working with primarily through early childhood cares can help make those connections as well. Okay, great. But please email me or do something. If you you should get one of those kindergarten transition um, handouts. It's it's something we developed that really walks through all this as well. Okay, great. I'll check with his preschool teacher then. She'll she'll know. That would be great. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Are there any other questions, comments? I just want to put in a plug for um, for the kits program, since we have some kiddos probably who are going to be entering kindergarten here. Um, but kits stands for kids in transition to school, and um, it's a summer program that basically builds uh, kindergarten readiness skills. Um, and it's usually a couple of days a week. Um, it's a free program, and um, I'm pretty sure that a lot of schools are going to be offering it in person this year since um, last year it wasn't an option, but um, there's also a parent um, component um, and basically during the time that kids are um, in class with each other kind of learning and building those um, skills to get them ready for kindergarten, parents have an opportunity to kind of learn alongside um, other parents uh, what that process is gonna look like and how they can support their kids. And it's really, really a wonderful program um, and it's no, no cost. And I highly encourage anybody who has a kiddo entering kindergarten to really look into that. Thank you. I put the name. So if you're interested in kits, um, the person working with you on transition and the school district should know about it. But we also, your service coordinator with Early Childhood Cares, if they don't know about it, we can get them that information for you too. Any other pressing questions? I see it's 502, so I don't wanna keep people over, but I'm happy to hang around a few more minutes if anyone has any other questions. If not, then I want to thank everyone for coming and to Eileen and Selena for doing this. And I um, want to just remind you that if you have any questions about early childhood cares, you can call us at 
346-2578 or go to our website at um, www.earlychildhoodcares.uoregon.edu. And have a lovely uh, rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you.